There's no loopholes in the Canadian Bill of Rights. There is no section one that anybody can get around and say, well, we're under an emergency, so we give up our rights. No, there's none of that. So you need to know and understand the Canadian Bill of Rights. So there's definitely a couple of things that I want to get into pretty heavily uh, in regards to you fighting for civil rights and liberties. Number one uh, is going to be people that are afraid of losing their jobs right now. And I know that you came through with something that seemed to be kind of a eureka moment. We're going to cover that. Is that something that you've looked into a little bit deeper? Uh, a, a little bit, yeah. I've okay. done a little bit more okay. research. Not a lot more, but a little bit. Okay, so we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk out uh, talk about some of the other things that people might reach out to you about in regards to looking for help because you're always saying that you know there are are people reaching out. So maybe you could highlight some of the things that you think people should know, or due to your estimation, what you believe people want to know. And I also want to go to where everything just started in regards to you going viral uh, and becoming a familiar face to someone like myself. So this is okay. Jody Ledgerwood, and we're going to talk about the Eaton Center, where you sat down to have a bite to eat in a food court, and you recorded this whole transaction, and you had this booklet, I believe, roughly 50 pages of kind of like knowing your loss, like a Coles notes of how to deal with someone that's trying to uh, get you to leave their establishment. Now... What was the driving force to make you even want to go to the Eaton Center and have a bite to eat without your mask, refuse to leave, and have that print out with you? <laughs> well, Vlad Sovalev from uh, We Are All Essential, he, he's typically in BC. He's a friend of mine. He happened to be in Toronto, and he was running um, basically a week-long rally in Toronto while he was here. And he asked me if I would come and speak it um at his rally at nathan phillips square and i said sure what do you want me to talk about and he said i want you to talk about your legal packages because i think they're worth something and we are all essential have my legal packages up on their website so i said sure i'll, I'll bring my legal packages so i actually printed off four full packages because i thought i'll give one to vlad and he can take it back to bc with him and then if there's a couple of other people there that i'm friends with i'll give it to them as well why not so when we went to City Hall and it, there wasn't a lot of people there, it was raining, it was an awful day and uh, the rally was outside. And so after about 45 minutes, we're, we're not drenched, but we're you know damp and cold and nobody else is showing up. We just went, ah, you know what, let's go get something to eat. We'll go in where it's dry and we'll figure out how to make these every Wednesday at uh, noon rallies bigger and better, how to spread the word. And then, we'll, and then we'll talk about other initiatives coming up or what else we can do in the movement um, to get people more engaged. So we decided to, there was six of us. So we're like, well, why don't we just go to the Eaton Center? And then that way it's a food court. All of us can get whatever it is we want to eat and we're not pigeonholed into one menu. So that's what we decided to do. Not even thinking today is September 22nd and the vaccine passports have come into play. Get right? out of town. So you're yeah. telling me this was not something that was kind of staged to where you were going in there and you wanted to kind of, you know, stand nope. up for yourself. This is just totally off the cuff. Okay, continue. That's amazing. Yeah, totally off the cuff. Okay. So we, the six of us, we're walking down, we walk in the Eaton Center and there's these signs about the vaccine passport. And we're like, oh, right, that's today. Okay, let's see how this plays out. Let's all go get what we want to eat and then we'll meet and we'll go in. Okay. So, and all of us are freedom fighters, obviously. Okay. So we, we went and got our stuff. There was five of us standing there waiting for one of the gentlemen to still get his food and join us, uh, Jim Kerr. Um, and so he opened up his salad and he started to eat just mm -hmm. standing there waiting. And a security guard came over and said to him, uh, excuse me, sir, you, you need to close that. And he's like, why? And she said, well, you can't eat standing here. You can only eat in, in there. And he's like, oh. And she goes, and you have to show us your vaccine passport in order to eat in there. So 
So he's like, okay. So he shuts his salad up and uh, our, our friend Mikesh finally joins us. And so we look at each other and we're like, okay, we're going to do this and let's see what, see what happens because we can only eat in there. We can't eat out here. Right. Um, and none of us have vaccine passports that we're interested in showing anybody. So we go up and there's six of us and the security guard goes, can I see your vaccine passport? And then we've obviously, we've got our phones and we're recording. And we're okay. Like, and at this point you're sitting down, right? This is when you're no. around the table. You're not even no, around walking. the table yet. Okay. No, we're, we're, we're walking in and they stop us to ask for our pass, our vaccine passports. And Vlad is the one talking and he goes, nope, it's none of your business. What my health records are. I'm not showing you my health records. And because there were six of us, we were able to split and divide and go around. And okay. this one person couldn't stop six people. Mm -hmm. So we just kept walking, grabbed our seat, sat down. And then that's when we were uh, circled by- Okay. Two. Now you're looking at this 50 page booklet that you now send out to people in regards to knowing their rights. And so was that the very first time that you use that booklet in public? No, I've used it a couple of times. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I had to use it a few weeks prior at Canadian Tire. <laughs> now for the individuals that don't know, and we're talking about our rights and civil liberties here, we're not talking about being reckless or making a ruckus or anything like that, but just your God-given rights. And what is it in that piece of legislation that you're reading off to these security guards that have them leave you alone to where you can sit down and you can enjoy a bite to eat without having to produce a passport? Well, first off, they tried to ask us to leave. They accused us of trespassing. So I have the Trespass Act in there. So we pulled that out and we read it to them, section two, A and B. What happens is a lot of police officers, security guards like to skip to section two B and ignore section two A and section two. Well, when you're reading law, words are very, very important. You can't just skip one section and go to the nether or read only half of a section and not the whole section. Words are important in, in, in law. They're very important. And so when cops skip to section 2B, where it says, if you're asked to leave, you must leave, or you're trespassing and you can be charged. But they keep forgetting to read section 2. And section 2 is very important. And it says, as long as you, well, it, it actually says, if you're not acting under a lawful right and you are causing a ruckus or you're not there to take part in the services that are being offered or you're asked to leave then you must leave or you're trespassing mm. but the key word is not acting under a lawful right so if you are there taking part in the services that they allow and your lawful right is under the canadian bill of rights no one's allowed to be discriminated against um, and everybody's entitled to life, liberty, security of person and property without discrimination. And you cannot be discriminated against for goods or services or, or anything to sustain your life. Hmm. Then you're acting under a lawful right. You're acting under the Bill of Rights, the Canadian Bill of Rights. That's your lawful right. You're there taking part in their services that they offer and advertise to the public you're not trespassing. Right. So is it the fact that you were able to get your food first, you were served, no one gave you a big deal about it. And then kind of the second that you decide to sit down and enjoy your meal, it's almost kind of like a breach of contract. You've purchased goods and now you want to be able to consume those goods, therefore no longer trespassing. Correct. Okay. Now, what if the person that when you walk up uh, at the food court, can they deny you service by saying, do you have a Vax passport? And you just say, no, they're, they're well within their rights to do that if they decide not to serve you? No. Okay. And okay. I say no, because we had the Freedom of Information and Privacy Protection Act, which says you do not have to consent to your medical information being, out, being given out. Mm -hmm. Under the Healthcare Consent Act, sir, you, again, you do not have to give out your medical information. And it's against the law for anybody to even ask you to. And it's against the law for somebody to ask you to provide your medical information in exchange for goods or services. 
it's against the law. We have the Privacy Act, we have um, the Healthcare Consent Act, we have the Freedom of Information and Privacy Protection Act. We in Ontario, we're very fortunate in Ontario, we have probably, I don't know, 10 to 20 different statutes that actually protect our, our information, protects our healthcare information, protects our healthcare records. A doctor cannot give out your healthcare information. Even when they're put on the stand, they cannot give out your healthcare information unless you give them consent. It's against the law. Okay. So why does a restaurant have the right to your healthcare, con- health, healthcare information when a doctor doesn't have the right to it mm-hmm. or the right to give it out? Oh, right. You're, you're getting all fired up right there. That's awesome. I can see it. <laughs> a bad mom right there. Uh, now, let me just say that, you know, Jody is not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I just thought I'd throw that in there. Like, by all mm-hmm. means, like at best, I read it at a grade four level. So no, no one can blame me for knowing the law or anything of that nature. So now you're sitting down, you're having a bite to eat, you're rhyming off these things as to why you can't leave. And then at the end of the day, they just kind of said, well, okay. And that whole thing, what was the, the length of the entire video? I can't remember how long you were there. Oh, I don't know, half hour to an hour, something like that. Okay. So it did take a while, but I mean, at the same time, like these security guards, how would they know anyways, right? It's the first day that something like this is even supposed to be applicable. And now there's, you know, Jody with her five pals with this pamphlet of 50 pages. Did you feel intimidated at all? Like how long did it take you to get past this point of intimidation to where you feel uh, very secure uh, and well-grounded within your rights to where that just doesn't bother you? Uh, I'm, all, I'm always nervous when I'm questioned. And in some of my videos, you see my hand shaking. Mm-hmm. But I know I'm right. I know my package inside and out. I know these laws protect me. And because I know them inside and out, I speak with confidence, even though my legs are shaking, my hands are shaking, my heart's beating a mile a minute, I'm sweating profusely. Um, but I know I'm right. And because I carry the package with me everywhere I go, um, I can show that I'm right as well. It's not enough to be able to say I'm right. You have to be able to prove you're right. So that's one of the reasons why I carry my package. If I know the store is friendly, then I don't worry about carrying my package in. If I'm going to a new store for the first time, I've got it hung over my shoulder. And it goes everywhere with me, um, just in case I am hassled. And and it's not enough. So many people, and I get asked this question all the time. Well, which law do I need to know? You need to know them all. Mm. And they're like, no, 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 no. Which law do I need to know? I'm like, no, no, you, you need to know them all. I put the package together because one law domino affects into the next law, which domino affects into the next law, which domino affects into the next law. Depending on who you're being violated by will depend on how far you have to go into that package to exert your rights um, and to educate. And most people don't understand what their rights are. Most people don't understand the rule of law in Canada. And you can't fault anybody from that because I didn't know what it was back in December. I knew what it was in January because I had to start pulling them in into my life. Um, And then as more and more things came at us with the lockdowns and the restrictions and the more ridiculous things got, the more I realized I had to dig deeper and pull out more laws. Um, So that's what I was doing. And then I started watching lawyers and I started watching all these groups that were doing the same thing. And I started paying attention. And then I was printing up the laws and reading them myself and highlighting words are very, very important in, in this fight that we're in. Right. And what has you fighting so hard? Who are you fighting for? Like, when did it skip from fighting for you, maybe fighting for your family to fighting for other people? Like, how did that evolve? Uh, yeah, at the beginning, it was fighting for myself. Um, I was fighting back against my real estate board who wanted me to resign my directorship um, because I was speaking out against the narrative. So at first, I'm like, crow, I have to learn these. I need to learn the laws for myself in order to fight back against this injustice. And then as time went on, I realized, no, I need to know these laws to fight back on behalf of my children. Because, and not that my children are young. I have a 16, 19, and 21-year-old. So they're, they're older children, 
but they're not taught their rights in school. They don't understand that they have rights and they don't understand that they don't have to participate in medical experiments. They don't have to take um, pills or anything else in order to exchange services or have a job. And they don't have to give out information. Their body is their own autonomy, it's their own sovereignty, and they don't have to share that with anybody. And that is covered, not only is it an inalienable right, but it's also a right protected under the law. Right. So if you don't mind me interjecting here, yeah. and I can see obviously why that would spread out into other people because you're a mom and there's obviously everyone out there has a mom or had a mom. And that's just kind of you taking care of the pack, right? Being, Correct. being that person. So now you mentioned your work and I wanted to get into that because so many people, number one, because of these mandates potentially uh, losing their jobs. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but in regards to just being able to speak your truth and just say like, hey, I want to stand up for my rights without seeming like you're some type of kook. Uh, <laughs> I, I have said it on my own Facebook. I, I remember two years ago when uh, we were in lockdowns and stuff like that, and I, I couldn't sit on a park bench. And I told people, this is my park bench. It's your park bench. Like, this is everyone's park bench. You're telling me I can't sit on a park bench that I pay for outside. And this is a slippery slope that we're on right now. It's just a park bench. And you're seeing a lot of people say, it's just, it's just, it's just. And it was just a park bench. And if I would have told you at that moment that you wouldn't be able to go to work, you would have to close the doors of your employment or your business, you would think that I was an absolute looney tune. And this is where we've ended up. And it's sad. So in regards to your work and other people out there that have jobs and they're afraid to speak their truth, because they're going to be outcasted when all they want to do is stand up for their rights, which are apparently behind them. How did you deal with that? And how do you suggest uh, that other people just start speaking their truth, at least just at the face level? Yeah, so when I was asked to resign, um, received that registered letter saying, we want you to voluntarily resign or we're going to have a meeting of the membership and fire you. And I went, wait a minute, I have the right under the Canadian Bill of Rights to freedom of speech. You don't get to tape my mouth. The law guarantees me that right. Um, and, and so from there, I, I started speaking up more and I said, no, you fire me. I'm going to force you to fire me. You can go through the embarrassment of spending the money to have a members meeting, telling the members why you want me gone and, and, and then fire me. I've done nothing wrong. I've been, a, I've been loyal to this board for eight years. I was the president of the board for three years. I'm the most qualified person to sit here and make decisions for our members. And I've made really good decisions for the last eight years. You're not going to fire me or put a piece of tape over my mouth because you don't like what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying doesn't run with the narrative. Uh, and a lot of what I'm saying is questions. At that point in time, it was just questions. And nobody was giving the answers. And, and questions scare people. And I don't understand why knowledge and information scares people. Because you only grow when you have information and you learn how to protect yourself when you have information. And information is power. People yeah. don't understand that. So don't be afraid of it. Um, right. And then that, that became my driving force. Everybody has the right to an opinion. Everybody has the right to question authority. And if you're not questioning authority, your life is going to be taken away from you very, very quickly. And you won't even see it coming. Right. So, and my dad can attest, I've questioned authority my whole life. You want me to do what? Why? <laughs> I said I'm laughing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Hi, dad. Oh, yeah. Hi, dad. <laughs> um, so... Now let's get into uh, another video that you had made on Instagram. Now I shared this on my Facebook wall and I've been trying to get a hold of you for a while now. And cause I just, I knew that there was a, a synergy there. I knew that you were the type of person that I wanted to talk to because this isn't something that has been like your life works or, or, or your life work culminating to this point to where finally you get to rah, rah, you know, you were a, a mom taking care of your kids, doing real estate, and then all of a sudden you're thrust into uh, this position. Or in fact, I mean, you made the decision to do so. Yeah. And 
Oh, I think I lost my train of thought there. I was talking with dad and I'm, I'm gone now. Thank God this is the power of editing right here. <laughs> so I know that I wanted to tie into, uh, into that second video. So I shared it on my wall. It got a ton of shares. I think like a thousand shares and I got a thousand likes. And you were talking about the fact that what you were saying in regards to not letting employers just let you go or put you on leave or whatever it might be, that there's a very important step for employees to take to make sure that they don't give their rights away. And you said, this is just very surface stuff. You weren't, you, you haven't gone in too deeply with it, but it seems like you've seen uh, a little bit of information that might be able to give some people hope. So if someone is told by their employer uh, that they should go home, or if there's someone that is employed and they're thinking, I just don't want to go to work and deal with the shame, what are the steps that that person should take? So I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, stand for the Re Rebecca Shepherd and um, Jane Scarf. Uh, I, I tend to follow, as I said, I, I tend to follow a lot of lawyers, law clerks, paralegals, because I know the law is there to protect us. You just got to know where to look. You got to know where to dig, and 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 you have to understand how to read the words. Legalese is really hard to read. It's confusing. Um, so I'm always listening. And way back when, when I was a kid, I actually went to school to be a law clerk. So I understand, I understand law. I just realized I can make more money as a waitress or as a bartender or as a realtor than I could as a law clerk. <laughs> so that's why I went that way. Um, but anyway, so I happened to catch a live video that they did talking about the Employment Standards Act here in Ontario. And all of the mandates that are out there right now, the vaccine mandate, the vaccine policy that our CMO has put out and said to businesses, you have to have a vaccine policy. Okay, but they don't tell you what that policy has to be. And as I said, words are so important. And if they read the guidelines that they sent out to all the businesses, it says it's a recommendation, it's advice, but they don't tell you what to put in it because if they tell you what to put in it, now the government is on the hook for liability. And the government doesn't want liability because if they did, they would have made legislation and everybody would have the same policy because it would be, it'd be law. And they haven't done that, which tells you these policies are, are illegal. And when you read the policy recommendation guidance that the government has put out, it actually says in that guideline for businesses to consult their lawyers, it says this is not legal advice. It also says that the policy must adhere to all legislation. And when you read legislation, that's your Canadian Bill of Rights. That's the Healthcare Consent Act. That's the Occupational Health and Safety Act. That's the Freedom of Information and Privacy Protection Act. That's the Privacy Act. That is all of these acts. And none of these mandates that say you have to be vaccinated or you have to antigen test in order to have your job, all of those break the laws. It breaks the acts, it breaks the codes, it breaks the regulations and the mandate that our chief medical officer has put out breaks that, but it also says in there, consult your lawyer and mm. make sure you're following the law. And people aren't reading. They get bored and they stop reading. Words are important. Um, so anyway, Rebecca and, and Jane, they did their homework, they dug deep. Just by chance, they came across the Employment Standards Act and there was an amendment done to the Employment Standards Act when the lockdowns came in. An employee is the only person in the employment contract that can put themselves on leave without pay. The employer can't do that. They either have to lay you off or they have to fire you. There, there, is, there is no uh, um, leave without pay from an employer's perspective. It's only from an employee's perspective. And an employee can only be granted it upon providing proof or resources as to why they need that leave without pay. 
But when the lockdowns happened, the Emergency Measures Act and Civil Protection Act came into play, they did an amendment to the Employment Standards Act because all of these businesses were now being mandated to shut their doors. If they weren't an essential business, they had to close down, which means now they had to put employees off, but they didn't want to lose their employees. So they did an amendment to the Employment Standards Act saying that employers, as long as their business was closed down or they weren't getting supplies, uh, inventory and supplies because of other businesses being shut down, or there was a lack of work due to the shutdowns, they could temporarily put people on leave without pay. But because we had CERB, they qualified for CERB. Mm. So that was fine. However, when the Emergency Measures Act was revoked on June 9th, 2021, in that amendment to the Employment Standards Act, it actually says that the employers within six weeks of the Emergency Measures Act being revoked must have all their employees called back to work and they can no longer use that clause. That clause will become null and void. Okay. So that six weeks was up July 28th. So employers can no longer put employees on leave without pay. It's against the law. They can't do it. Right. Now, I also heard something in that video in regards to making sure that you show up to work, that if they are not at work, within three days that they kind of forfeit their rights? Is that how that works? It is how that works because it's it's considered, like if you don't show up for work for three consecutive days and you haven't called in sick, you haven't given a reason, then they deem you to have quit, to terminate that employment contract. Mm. And now the employer has a right to fire you. They can either be nice and say you resigned because you didn't show up for work for three days, or they can put on the record of employment, dismiss with a, or dismiss with cause because you just didn't show up to work and they had no idea where you were and why. And they can use that because them asking you not to come into work because you're not jabbed is illegal. They can't ask you that, right? So as long as you show up for work when, on your next scheduled work day, and you make the attempt to come into work and you record the incident. And some people are working from home, so they just have to log into their computer, but they have to record the fact that they tried to go to work and they were stopped by the employer or manager or supervisor or whoever they were stopped by and they were turned away. They need to record that. And then they go home and they send an email to either their union rep, if they're unionized, um, or they send it to their HR department saying, I do not consent to being put on leave without pay. I did not ask for it. I did not request it. I don't understand why I'm not being welcomed at work. I've done nothing wrong. I'm following the rule of law in Canada. I, I wish to report to my next day and I wish to be paid for the day for today where the employer refused my entry. I am more than able, capable, and willing to work. So they have to do that. And like, what's the end game though? So for instance, people will say, if everyone just kind of stood up together, you know, they wouldn't be able to find enough people, yada, 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 we'd back up the system, et cetera. Obviously that's not happening. Now on the flip side, there's a whole bunch of people that are saying, okay, this is against my rights. I shouldn't be losing my job or I shouldn't be told to go home without pay. Like number one, does this have to go to a lawyer? Are lawyers going to be doing pro bono? Like how many of these cases can make it through? Because we're literally going to be talking about tens of thousands of people. So people, they get that recording, they do everything right. They take those steps. And then what? Like, what if they don't have money for a lawyer? You don't always need a lawyer though. And this is what people don't understand. You can take, you can charge them with criminal code violations, asking you to participate in a medical experiment in exchange for in employment, that's assault, that's, that's extortion, that's a threat, do this or else, that's uttering threats. So you can take, or you can take criminal code actions 
and charge these people who are violating your rights. You don't charge the company mm -hmm. because the company is not a person. You know, a company is a piece of paper. You can't sue a piece of paper. You're not going to get anything out of them. You have to sue the individuals. And people who are unionized can sue the individuals. Now, if you want to go after the company and you're unionized, you have to go through arbitration. Mm -hmm. And arbitration is a long drawn out process. But again, your union, you pay union dues to protect you, the employee. They're not there to protect the employer. So if your union is not representing you, you can actually file um, to have them excused from representing you anymore due to dereliction of duty. Because the union, you pay union dues to protect you and represent you. And what we're finding um, is that the unions more and more are protecting the employer. And they're bringing in these union lawyers who are there to protect the employer. And they're forgetting that the rule of law in Canada protects everybody. It doesn't matter what your job is. Nobody is above the law and the law covers everybody equally and undiscriminatively. And people are forgetting that, the unions are forgetting that. And yeah, you might be out of work for a while. Um, it's not going to be a fast, easy solution. But if enough people would actually do this, it would be a fast, easy solution. And we're already seeing that there's a shortage of labor here in Ontario. Hence the reason why the government announced the other day that they were not going to mandate um, vaccinations on healthcare workers because they all of a sudden realized the shortage in our hospitals and that was going to cause even more harm than right. letting unvaccinated people actually work. I can't even understand why that was a thing. We're supposed to be in the middle of this pandemic and everything's going to shit and yet we can find time <laughs> and money and all this other kind of stuff to make sure that our frontline heroes uh, are going to be dismissed if they make a, a medical choice that's best for them. I've been uh, very outspoken on that. Now, mm -hmm. I also want to just say, if you're liking this podcast, by the way, please like, subscribe. Uh, we're also going to have a whole bunch of information on Jody here as well, so you can follow her on Instagram uh, so she can grow her following because she's a freedom fighter. Yay. I'm just glad to be a part of it. Uh, now, I'm also now, on Facebook, but I'm in Facebook jail now, so oh, this yeah. is the second 30-day jail sentence it doesn't take much huh no it really doesn't mm -hmm. well actually it took them a year and a bit probably okay. a year and a half before i got my first jail sentence so <laughs> i'm thinking about just posting cat pictures pretty soon <laughs> anything that i post of importance doesn't go anywhere anyways uh they give me a little shadow bands and all that jazz okay. so, well instagram is shadow banning me as well they yeah they're cutting your feeds my, they keep cutting my my sound feeds and when i was at city hall there and was being assaulted by the security guards as soon as they put their hands on me instagram shut my feed and then turned it back on when i was outside away from the security guards mm. i was like wow because i did not stop filming people thought i had stopped filming but i didn't right and you are charging them moving forward correct yes right now i'm in the process of trying to get the video from city hall because obviously instagram cut my video right. on me oh, okay yeah. wow yeah that was pretty intense i remember seeing that and you're i mean you don't come across i don't know you could be six foot four for all i know but you look like you're five a pretty tiny <laughs> a five foot three lady and it was two male security guards that put their hands on you yes yeah that must have been scary yeah it's the first time i've been assaulted um it was uh yeah it was a pretty scary experience and the one gentleman was about my size a little bit bigger um, and then the other gentleman was a much bigger gentleman. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, it's taking two of you. And by the time, you know, they got me outside, my arms were red and I had bruises coming up already. Okay. Now, so, Jody, now I'm going to play devil's advocate. And okay. what, what do you say to the individual that thinks that you're going out there looking for trouble and you're antagonizing? Well, all you have to do is watch my videos. I'm far from antagonizing. I am a small lady, five foot three, 130 pounds. I'm definitely not intimidating by any way, shape or form. Um, I know not to go out and antagonize people. I know not to go out causing a scene. Um, I know if you're going into a store, go into the store like you would any other time to shop. Um, don't, don't attack people. And, and treat people with compassion and empathy because they don't know the law. 
And when you don't know the law and you think you're doing the right thing by following the government mandates and following the narratives that you're hearing on TV and seeing advertised on the, on the billboards and stuff, you think you're right. So you always have to go with compassion. You, you have to go with a calm voice and, and you have to have in your head, I didn't know this law yesterday either. So, and you've got to treat people respectfully. And as, as long as you do that, um, hopefully you will prevail. Hopefully you will get them on, the, on your side and hopefully you will get them to listen. Um, because at the end of the day, we all have to educate each other. We all have to empower each other. And we have to remember we're all equal. We all bleed the same way and we all hurt the same way. And these mandates do nothing but hurt all of us as a society. And if we're gonna to come together and we're gonna grow as a community, then we have to be patient and we have to have compassion and, and, and be willing to educate. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's where I am. Um, I, I've just come to accept that people don't know. And I do information sessions all the time. I'm invited to different places um, to do private information sessions. And it amazes me how many people don't know that they are protected under the law and don't understand that they have the right to a job. They have a right to the security of their person. They have a right to make individual decisions that affect their lives. Right. Um, the government doesn't dictate that to you. And the laws very specifically protect you from that dictatorship. Right. I think it's really unfortunate. And you kind of hit the nail on the head in regards to kind of having empathy and treating people with respect. I find that there are too many for my liking, and I understand that everyone has their freedom of speech and expression, but I believe go about this the wrong way. And they think that sometimes louder is better. And I don't know, like sometimes it's great to have someone that's super loud in front of a pack, right? But there's also something to be said about having uh, a voice of maybe that person and then a thousand people behind them all at once. You catch uh, more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Right. I thought you were going to say like, <laughs> isn't that supposed to be like poop or something out at the end? I don't know that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but no, and, and people will listen to you if you're respectful. Usually mm -hmm. you, you get the odd person who, who digs in their heels and no matter what you say to them, they're, yeah. they're going to tell you you're wrong. No matter what you show them, they're going to tell you they're wrong. Um, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm actually going to take this as a moment right now, because I mean, I say it on social media, and I think people uh, get that vibe from me when I, I do my podcast, but how it, it really disappoints me when people lose their cool, uh, when they when they don't come from a place of kindness, even though they not they may not being they may not be being treated very kindly themselves. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have a chat with you, because even when you had hands put on you, uh, you still kept a, a very strong level of calm where I don't think anyone would have blamed you if you were to start swearing, kicking and screaming <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but you, you kept calm, you kept composed. And it's almost like you just have an understanding that there's just people out there that don't believe in what you believe. There's things there, there are people that don't know what you don't know, and you try to at least you know, put yourself in their shoes for a couple of moments, uh, no matter what their behavior might be. So I think that's a, that's a big kudos to you. And I wish there were more people fighting this fight that way, to be quite honest. And I mean, it's different strokes for different folks, but that's kind of my deal, the one that you're leading right now. Thank so you. thank you for that. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, so you said people are reaching out and they're wanting help all the time from you. And I'm getting phone calls. I have to take my, I have, I'm gonna have to take my phone number off my website because I mean, because I don't know. It's because I bring people to the information. Like I don't know what you know. That's why I have you on the podcast. So I I don't know these things, uh, but I do have people reaching out wanting to share their stories with me. People that are telling me about their pain. They don't know what they're gonna do. They're lost. They're confused. What would be a couple of things that people are reaching out to you on a constant basis that you can kind of just give them a Coles notes to right now to maybe number one, they won't bother you as much. <laughs> <laughs> they'll know, right? So this is a chance for you to streamline that information. Uh, but a couple of things that you can just uh, little bullet heads, bullet points uh, that you could share with individuals, uh, kind of like the FAQ in, re in regards to things that people want to know. Okay, well, everybody right now, obviously, the hot topic is, I'm losing my job, I just got a letter, what do I do? And, and I say to them, 
you need one to understand the rule of law in Canada. And you can't just know one. You, and they'll say, okay, well, what's the next part? I say, okay, well, one, if you're going into a store, you have to know the, the Trespass Act. You have to have that. But for everything, you need to understand and know the Canadian Bill of Rights. That there's no loopholes in the Canadian Bill of Rights. There is no section one that anybody can get around and say, well, we're under an emergency, so we give up our rights. No, there's none of that. So you need to know and understand the Canadian Bill of Rights. After that, you have to understand you've got the Privacy Act. Nobody's entitled to your information. You must consent to everything and you have the right under, again, there's probably uh, probably 10 different legislations out there that protect your right to consent. And at any given time, you can take back the consent that you've given. Okay. And people don't understand that either. They think, well, I've gone along to get along and I've been doing the testing and I've been doing this. Yes, but you don't have to. You've got the Genetic Non-Discrimination Act that protects you from having to do genetic uh, testing. And a lot of employers are saying, oh no, we're not testing your genetics. So that, that doesn't apply. If they are taking a DNA sample to diagnose whether you have COVID or not, that is a diagnostic test. Therefore, against the law, they have no right to ask you to take it. They have no right to even, if you decide to take it, they have no right to even ask you what the results are. And again, because of the Canadian Bill of Rights, they have no right to withhold employment from you in exchange for that information. Mm. It's discriminatory and it's against the criminal code. So okay. those are you know, a few acts right there that people must have in their arsenal. Right now, what's one thing that people are doing wrong? Like generally, they, they kind of maybe step into a store, like number one, we're not condoning this, right? Where you puff out your chest and you're looking for some shit. Uh, but what's generally one thing that people are doing in regards to maybe misinterpreting the law to where they think they have some legal grounds and the reality is they don't and maybe just setting a really poor example for others? Well, what you said earlier, they go in and they're loud and they're proud. And, and I've seen different videos where people are walking in and they're walking in with a group of people and they start going, freedom! Okay, yeah. well, now you're causing a nuisance. The moment you start yelling, screaming, or you're carrying a sign, you are no longer there with the intention of shopping. You are there with the intention of something else, of proving a point. Okay. That is not a legal activity in these stores. That's not an activity that they advertise for. I like to say, if you're going into Canadian Tire and you're gonna jump rope in the middle of the aisle, they can ask you to leave because jumping rope in the middle of the aisle is not what they advertise you can come in and do. They advertise you can come in and shop and get tire advice and get your car fixed. They don't say you can come in and jump rope. Even though jumping rope is a perfectly simple thing and it really doesn't affect anybody, you're still performing a service or an activity that is not advertised in that building. So that that's the big one that I see. People are like, I'm going to go in, I'm going to be loud. And they start screaming. They raise their voice. Well, now you're causing a nuisance. So now they can legitimately and legally ask you to leave because mm -hmm. you're causing a nuisance. And I've seen a couple of videos recently of, of people who have lost their jobs because they refused to consent to giving away their medical information. And now they're like screaming and yelling and causing a scene. Well, now you're trespassing. You know, they can ask you to leave. They can call the police and have you hauled off in handcuffs. They can put a no trespass citation against you because you're causing a nuisance. You know, it's one thing to calmly sit there and say, no, this is against my rights. You're violating me. Here's the law right here. It's plain and clear. OSHA is very plain and clear. The Employment Standards Act is very plain and clear. The Canadian Bill of Rights is very plain and clear. Um, but instead of doing that, they scream, they yell, they stomp their feet, they throw a temper tantrum, they kick signs, they throw things. Mm -hmm. Now you're breaking the law. Yeah, the law's on your side until you step onto the wrong side of it. That's right. So the big thing is to keep your cool. And if, if you feel like you're going to lose your cool, then you need to leave. Mm -hmm. There's no point in taking a ticket for a real violation. Right. Now, I was talking to a, a couple of my friends that have your package, by the way. 
and they love you. And I'm like, I don't think this lady understands what a big deal she is to some people. Uh, (laughs) You are like you're you're a big deal to some people. And a lot of it has to do with the the way that you come across, which seems to be pretty genuine and kind. And I, I I think it's mainly because you offer people hope. Uh, which is an amazing thing. And I can't tell you uh, how many individuals out there, you know, and I don't have, well, (laughs) how many people that are out there to where it just, it really, it really means the world to them. And I want you to know that. I think it's really important uh, because I can only imagine how difficult it is out there every day uh, taking the shots. I'm pretty sure that maybe there's some places that you go to where maybe, oh, here comes this broad through my way you know, through my front door. And (laughs) there's an empowerment to that, right? And it it gives people the ability to see a little bit of themselves in you. Uh, And so I hope that always, you know, helps maybe fuel the fire a little bit more when you're having those days that you're thinking, I I mean, I don't know if I can, you know, keep on doing that. Have you, have you hit that point? Have you had, have you had breakdowns? Have you, have you questioned yourself what you're doing and, and how do you keep on pushing through? Oh yeah, I've had uh, I've had my days where I can't get out of bed because uh, you know it's 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 heavy I and mean, what everybody's going through right now is it's heavy. I'm the last week to ten days has been heavy for me, um, and I've cried a lot in the last ten days. I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> um. So yeah, so when you know I understand about the hope and empowerment. And I'm really glad that people feel that way because I know what it's like to feel hopeless and like nothing is changing. We're, we're out, you know, every weekend rallying and protesting. We're doing these big events. Um, I, I'm doing these information sessions. Um, and sometimes it feels like we're not, we're not making any headway and, uh, and it gets a little heavy sometimes, but, um, yeah, but then tomorrow's a new day and I wake up and uh, I find something to be thankful for and I get up and then somebody will call me and it always seems to be somebody calls right when I need them to and, um, and it picks me up and it gives me the motivation to keep going or the motivation that there really are good people out there and there are people that want to fight and there are people who understand how important this is and that our kids matter. And if we don't do this, our kids are not going to have a future of choice. Um, you know, I'm 40, 47 and uh, I've had 40, basically 47 years of choice where I had the choice to choose my job and choose where to eat and choose what to wear and where to go to school where to travel. My kids right now don't have those choices. My kids, if they want to go to school, have to wear masks. I see my daughter's Instagram posts and it hurts me to no end to see a mask on her face. And she's like, oh, it's just a mask. It's not just a mask. It is you giving up your inalienable rights that our ancestors fought and died for, for you to have that choice, for you to make the decision that you matter and your body matters and your health matters and that your mind matters, your thoughts and your emotions matter. And all of this, the mandates, the, the, the suppression of society And that's what's happening is the the suppression of thoughts and emotions and freedoms is happening. The suppression of who you can even communicate with is happening. And for people to just go, "Eh, it's just it, that hurts beyond any belief. And the people, and the fact that people don't think that that's worth fighting for. Well, I'm sorry. I want my kids to be able to experience the world and I want my kids to be able to make healthy choices for themselves and the choices of where they're going to go in the future. And if we don't fight now, if we just throw in the towel and say, eh, it's just, they will never have that, that right to choose. And, and what's the most difficult part? I mean, cause obviously you got emotional. <laughs> it, it makes me angry is what it makes me. Um, because I've 
I don't want to believe that people don't care. And I don't want to believe that people are willing to give up that easily. We are killing our kids. Our kids are dying. Our kids are, com are committing suicide. My, my kids and my daughter are suffering mental health issues gigantically all over the place. And it's not just my kids, it's little kids, it's older kids, it's, it's young, young adults. They have no hope. They, they feel like they've got no friends. They feel like they're gonna kill everybody. They're afraid of everything. They're afraid to breathe fresh air for goodness sakes when they're outside. If, I, I don't understand how people don't see this as a problem. This is biology 101. We all deserve to breathe fresh air and in order for our bodies to work, we have to bring in oxygen and exhale all of the toxins in our body. And if we can't get that out of our, ourselves and we just continuously breathe it, we're hurting ourselves. And I don't understand why people don't get that. I don't understand how people can just freely give away their rights. You know, we're coming up to Remembrance Day here and how many people lost grandparents and fathers and brothers and nephews and uncles and, and mothers and sisters due to war because they fought like mad for democracy and for freedom. And here we are just a few days away from Remembrance Day and we're saying, eh, it's just. That fires me up and makes me really angry because it's not just. It's not just. Yeah, it's not just. <laughs> not just. And our babies need protection. And if we don't stand up and show them how, who's gonna? Right. Now, to get that angry look off your face, because I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Smooth. Very um, smooth. <laughs> what, what makes you happy? What is it that really makes you happy right now um, in regards to, you know, this this rally for freedom that, that you're, you know, basically, you know, leading in a lot of cases or a part of playing a very big role. What make, what makes you smile? You know, what makes me smile when people come up to me and they say, Oh my gosh, you've given me hope. That makes me smile. When people say I had no idea that makes me smile. Cause it means they're listening. Um, and when they say, I got your package. And I did what you said. I got a phone call yesterday. I was in the car and I had, I had, was in Tweed and I did a legal information session there. I was told there would be about 12, 15 people there. There was about 60 people. Shocked me when I walked in the room. I was like, uh, uh oh. Um, but anyway, one of the people that were there, she was losing her job as of Monday. And so she was, she was very emotional at this meeting and, you know, I, I advised her what to do and then found out about the Employment Standards Act. So I put out my video. Well, she happened to see the video because ever since now being at that thing, she's like religiously following me now, waiting for me to say something else. And so anyway, she saw that video. She went into work yesterday and took my advice. She went in, she was scared beyond belief, but she did it. And of course they sent her home. She called me up and she's like, oh my God, I feel so empowered. You have no idea. I did it. And this is what they said. They said exactly what you said they were going to say. So what do I do now? So I walked her through yeah. the next step. And wow. she was so like, I could hear the strength in her voice. I could hear the confidence in her voice. And nothing gives me more pleasure than to see people going from like, it's hopeless to oh my gosh, it's not hopeless. I'm stronger than I think. And when I see that change in people, that's, it, right. it, means, it means what I'm saying matters. It means that people finally get it. Life matters. They matter. And, and to empower them and, and see the confidence and, and see that click in the switch in their eyes, like that's, that, right. that makes me happy when I see more and more people come out and more and more people, every time I go shopping, I don't wear a mask shopping anywhere. And every time I walk into the store and somebody goes, she doesn't have a mask on and they take it off and they throw it in their pocket. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, you know, I, I think even I stand a little taller at that point in time when I see that five foot three and a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, <that's> okay. <laughs> exactly. 
So yeah. when I see people taking back their lives or seeing seeing somebody else set an example and then they go, huh, well, if it's that easy, I can do it too. And they do it. Yeah, that's the crazy thing is that so many people fall on different you know, uh, parts of the spectrum in regards to like what their level of fear is or what their level of compliance is. But it's obvious, like, and I was in the shopping mall the other day and everyone's wearing a mask. And for me, I, I'm just going to say it. And it's not, it's not to give anyone any grief or whatever. It just looks like the fucking twilight zone to me. It just, it's really, it, it, it disturbs me. And I understand that there, there's some people that are doing it because, uh, because they believe it's keeping people safe. You know, there's right. definitely that camp. And there's, then there's this camp that are just doing it to comply. Like they just don't want to wear it, but they just do because they don't want the trouble. Uh, you know, I've done that plenty of times. I, you know, I've been called stupid because I've had my mask below my nose. Uh, th that like, you know, do you, he asked me if my mask was broken and I said, no. And he goes, well, I guess you're just too stupid to wear properly. And I'm like, well, that's okay. You know, and I just, I, I didn't react. I didn't give him, you know, what he was looking to get. And, and you know what else? Oh. When you see a little child and they look at you and they're confused because everybody around them has a mask on and they're looking at you without a mask on your face. Right. And then you see the light in their eyes and they start to smile. I make sure every time I see a child, especially a little one, I look right at them and I smile. And if, I, if they're young enough and I see that mom and dad hasn't put a mask on, I mm -hmm. always make a point of saying, wow, I love seeing your beautiful face and to see that child light up because they're now seeing another face, they're seeing lips, they're, they're seeing a smile and to see them light up and that confusion drop off their face. Right. That is, that, yeah. that is the best. That's it. Yeah, I'm really curious what it would look like if the mandates were lifted, how many people would and how many people wouldn't. It'd be it'd be interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. Uh, but we can all we can all hope, or I can hope, and you can hope. And there's people out there could also hope, or maybe you don't. You can feel any which way you do about the subject. See, I'm trying to be neutral as possible. I have love. <laughs> I have love for everybody. Right, everyone. They have the choice to wear a mask just as much as I don't want to wear one. That's right. Pro so, choice. Pro choice. That's right. That's all, I'm all about pro choice. So I think we're going to wrap up. It's been an incredible conversation and I'm so glad that you made the time to do so. I'm going to make sure to leave links and information in regards to how they can get that book that you wrote <laughs> <laughs> and put together. And I, I believe you highlight these two. Is that something you I still, did. you did? I did. I did wow. And I do every time I come across something new, I print it off and I highlight it because People don't necessarily understand what they're reading or what it is that they need. So I want to make their job as simple as possible so that they get on our side. Right. People are lazy. I know it. I'm lazy too. I get it. Yeah. Um, so if I can make their job as easy as possible to get them to stand up and stand in their square and not consent, I'm going to do it. Right. I'm going to do it. Well, Jody Ledgerwood, thank you very much for appearing on the Launchpad podcast. Uh, if people want to find you online, Instagram, just you can say it right now so they can do it right away. It's just under my name at Jody Ledgerwood, J O D Y L E D G E R W O O D. Okay, great posts, great videos. And if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Also, want to give a huge shout out to my title sponsor, Galant Media for websites, graphic design, and all that good stuff. Uh, Jody, you have yourself a fantastic evening. Say goodnight to dad for me uh, and, and the <laughs> <Hi> dogs. <Dad. laughs> and I hope we will have a chat with you again sometime soon. Thank you, Jason. Hope to meet you in Ottawa when I'm there this weekend. Absolutely. You take care, be well, love simply because you can. Thank you.